pins and look around you and say hello, say welcome, share your name, make sure everyone feels like they are wanted here and loved and welcomed. God, we, we bow before you uh, this morning, and we're in awe, Lord, of your love for each one of us, God. And for all our many blessings, we just want to thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for pouring your, your love out into our lives, Lord God, and, and helping us to understand uh, your love for us and your grace on us and your mercy, Lord Jesus. Where would we be without you? We would be lost but we're found in you, we're your children, and we just love you this morning. We pray, God, that as we sing to you, Lord, these songs, these, these words that are true, Lord Jesus, that we would be able to really grasp them with our hearts and praise you in spirit and in truth this morning, Lord, because you deserve all the glory and all the praise. And um, so we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be here together and to praise you together. Just have your will and your way this morning in our hearts and lives. We welcome you here, Lord Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit. We need you. In Jesus' name, amen. And then we're going to start with a song, Praise Him. Please sing with us.
So I'm going to read it now. Jeremiah 9, starting at verse 23. Thus says the Lord, let not the wise man boast in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man boast in his might. Let not the rich man boast in his riches. But let him who boasts, boast in this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord who practices steadfast love, justice, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, declares the Lord. Amen. Amen. He is the great I am. <coughs>
glory this day. You are worthy, Lord Jesus, of all the honor. And we just thank you, Lord Jesus, for who you are this morning and that we get to know you as our personal Lord and Savior, our best friend, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, and our soon returning Savior. Yes. We just thank you and praise you in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. 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 You may be seated. sound booth there. Oh, there we go. Good morning. Yeah, stop talking to the sound guy. <laughs> you think he's having a good morning? <laughs> well, so you see in our, in our, our uh, bulletin, first off, there's a lie here because it says we have church bus pickup. The church bus had a blowout in the manifold. So we're waiting for a new one to come in, but when it comes in, we promise it'll come. Huh? Not a new bus, <laughs> a new manifold. <laughs> wow. So, so that's coming in. Um, the, the guy who fixes the bus for us, we can't rush it because he does it as a, as a ministry for us. So we can't call him and say, what's your problem? Actually, he does a great job. It's just taken a while to get it in. So it's the woman. Who? Maybe it's the woman pole, not the man pole. Okay, so. Yeah, Sean, sorry for being here this morning. Starting October 29th, starting October 29th, we have, uh, we'll have an in-house counselor. Because, you know, I have no compassion for anybody. <laughs> And, you know, we've had complaints about me slapping people across the face and stuff, so, no. No, not true, but, but Jamie Couch, we've known him for a lot of years, is a great guy, and very, uh, he's a good listener. And, and so he's going to start, he's going to set up shop here starting October 29th. I think that's a Tuesday night. So he's going to start with Tuesday night, so every Tuesday night he'll be here. All you got to do is call and make an appointment, and he is a registered counselor. It can go on your insurance, you know, that kind of stuff, but he's a Christian counselor. So it's what we call neuthetic counseling. He's going to counsel from the Word of God. None of these uh, social, uh, that stupidity is not coming into play. It's all Bible. If you don't want to hear what the Bible has to say about your problem, don't sign up for that. October 31st, Candy Fest. I know, there's one person coming. So, <laughs> there's a sign up at the back of the fellowship. You gotta sign up because October 31st is like <laughs> tomorrow or something. So, yeah, okay. So sign up and, and the reason we have Candy Fest is because some people don't like the idea of their kid going out in the street, getting scared to death, spooked, people jumping out of bushes and stealing their candy. That's the worst thing that could ever happen. Not that it ever happened to me. <laughs> but maybe I did that to some kids. I don't know. The point is, they can come here, a safe place. You know where they are. They're playing. There's bouncy castles. They're going to get a big bag of candy, so their teeth will rot the same as every other kid. No yeah. one's left out. Can I make a plug for that, too? Pardon? Do you mind if I make a quick plug for that? This is yeah. Okay, go ahead. You know how his quick plugs go. Yeah, Got an hour? Yeah, here we go. Uh, Okay, so no, I, I just want to say, this is a great opportunity for those families that maybe you wanted to tell about Jesus, you wanted to invite them to church, you wanted to, maybe you already did, and they just didn't want to go because they've been to church before, they got burned, they had a bad experience, whatever the case is. Now you can say, hey, we're doing this, you know, who, who likes going out on Halloween? It's either raining or snowing or terrible weather, and that way your kids can still come, still get candy. But then you can show them the church. They can build up, up that, uh, uh, just feel good about, oh, it's not a scary place. There's good people here, right? But I don't want to say it, but there's a lot of people that come here from N.A. 
and they started coming to church because they got used to coming to NA, Narcotics Anonymous, in the basement to a week. And then they started learning, church isn't a scary thing. It's not as bad as I built it up in my head. So, so use this. This is not just for the people within the church. This is to share Jesus, the same as everything we do. Okay? So remember that. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Is it <laughs> <laughs> So, Paul just had back surgery a, a week ago, spinal fusion, and he's, he's up and walking around, so your prayers were marvelous. Thank you so much. Good to, good that he's back. Good that he's back to give announcements. We got, if you didn't see when you pulled in, we have a new trailer at the back here. That's, uh, that's our class for Sunday school room for our youth. We had, uh, we had like in this little room downstairs, they had like 24 youth and you can't do that, especially with youth. It was being destroyed. No, it's, um, they got their own trailer now. It's twice the size and uh, they can do what they want out there uh, under the supervision of a youth instructor leader person. Yeah, but that's, uh, we praise God for that. Like it's a, it's a, we weren't allowed to do anything here because we're in Georgina. Uh, so uh, we, we managed to get a trailer because it's, it's not permanent. It, is, it can be moved. So we don't need permits, and we're very excited about that. If you've tried to build here, you understand what we're talking about. So praise God for that, huh? Yeah, Monday, the guy's coming. The electrician's coming. Monday is going to hook up the power. There's heating. There's air conditioning. We never have to see the youth again, really. <laughs> Oh my goodness, that's terrible. Okay, so we need to um, we need to pray. Uh, Pastor Jenny's uh, cousin has been missing since October the fifth. He's twenty five years old. I want to pray for him, his family. That's something to go through, isn't it? Uh, we want to pray for Cindy, for uh, Eric, and it's Jenna's mom. Cindy, she's not doing well. The leukemia is acting up. She's had strokes because of blood clots. They can't operate because of this, this. You know, everything's working against her. And so we want to pray for her. You know, when we pray for people, it's not necessarily that we want God to heal them. But we want to make sure that, that they know that their heart's right with God. Because you don't know. Man, you can go into a hospital for a toothache and, and you die from an infection. Um, not to say that she's going to die. But, but you know what? Her heart's right with God. Her heart's right with God. It's a good thing. Because we don't... Have, Cindy's been attending here. She knows about Jesus. And, and, and she's, she knows how, where she's going. I think we've got to start... As, as followers of Jesus, we have to start looking different at, you know, at this death thing. Is we can't let Satan get the upper hand. We don't die. This, this, this thing's going to die, and some days I'm very grateful that it's going to die. <laughs> but, but my spirit is eternal. And, and when I die, I'm going to be with Jesus. Amen. And there could be nothing more beautiful and more exciting. And, and we got to get to that place. Now, I know it sounds morbid somehow, but that's because you were born here. Our home is not here. Our home is with our Father. And our Father's in heaven. And, and I... Somehow we got to look forward. To, can you imagine the, the, the community looking at us going, what is wrong with those people? They love having funerals. That's why we call them funerals. We just changed the way you say it. Um, we have to pray for, uh, for Jaden still. I, I didn't even listen to the update this morning. Is she doing better? Is she still at that same place? She's doing better. She had a, another operation, so they opened up her head on the right side. Oh. Because there's still more infection. Basically, it's a bug. They don't know what it is. It's a bug? Yeah, so they're taking cultures and trying to grow it. Nothing's growing yet. Mm. Uh, but it still keeps coming back. So as soon as they pull the drain, the pressure builds up, and then she's oh. starting to get worse. But she's doing quite well, very alert right now. Wow. Uh, communicating with her eyes. Yeah. Uh, still so trying to talk? Uh, she She's trying to, but she still has a feeding tube. So it's oh, yeah. yeah. Things, yeah oh, just, man. Little by little, God's doing amazing things. Yeah. It's awesome. yeah. So we keep praying for Sean's family and and uh, for Jaden, that God would heal her. Young girl. How old is she? 21? 22. 22. And she doesn't know Christ. <coughs> she what? She, she, she know does Christ. not know Christ. She doesn't know Jesus. No. Who knows what's happening 
with dinner. Yeah, what's going on in her mind, eh? It's not that she never heard. Yeah. Wow. You know, and we talked last week, we were looking at, we're going through John, and we looked at how Jesus said that sorrow comes before joy. If we didn't have sorrow in our life, we wouldn't know what joy was. Yeah, think about that. And, and so God allows these things to happen, and there's a reason for them. And, and it's not that it's going to make you happy, but you can, you can embrace those times of sorrow and say, look, now joy's going to come. And uh, so we want uh, Jaden to get born again for sure, because Amen. then if something does happen, we don't have to be so sad. We'll be sad. We're going to separation is a terrible thing. I don't even like talking about you guys think I like talking about death. I don't really. Because one day my poor wife is going to be without me. <laughs> oh, the heartbreak. <laughs> and you're all invited. There's probably a party. <laughs> Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you so much. We're so grateful that you are in charge, that you, you are in control of all things, because we know nothing. What we know is, you, even the smartest guy on earth, the guy who thinks he's so smart, he doesn't know anything compared to you. You've created all things. You understand how all things work. You see past, present, and future all at once. All we see is this moment, and we don't understand that moment. Father, we're so glad you're in control. We can trust you. We can put our faith in you. And God, in these situations, we, we thank you for what you've done in Jaden's body. Thank you. And we thank you for what you're doing in her body. God, we do pray, please, please heal Jaden. But God, we pray more than that, that she would come to know you because of this experience. We pray for Sean and his family, all of them, Lord. All, the, if they're not born again, we pray that this draws them to you, not repels them from you, that they don't blame you and run away, but that they would embrace you and allow you to help them to get through all of this. Father, we pray for Sean that you give him peace. Thank you so much. We pray for Jenny's family. God, I can't even imagine. I lost a kid. No idea where they are. No idea what's going on. Are they okay? Oh, God, be with that family. Give them peace and comfort. Help them through this time of trouble. But God, again, we pray that somehow through all of this, they would find you. Lord, we pray for Cindy. All these, these last few years going through the chemo for the leukemia and all this stuff going on, all that she's been through. And now these blood clots and the, 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 it just seems like it's totally impossible. But that's usually when you step in. And so we pray, Lord, touch her body and heal her. Let those doctors see a miracle. One that they can't explain. I love it when that happens. <coughs> Father, be with her. Keep her comforted. Keep her focused on you, Jesus. Be with the family. Give them peace. What a terrible thing to have to watch your mom go through all that. Give them strength and comfort, we pray in Jesus' name. Speak to us now as we look into your word. Speak to us through your Holy Spirit, through the word of truth. We thank you so much. Thank you that you love us and you care for us. Lord, there's people, in this, there's people in this building, there's people watching on Facebook that are going through difficult times right now. And, and maybe they heard what I said, but they think I'm some kind of freak. Lord, I pray that they would, they would embrace you, that they would have a hunger for your word. Because the more we read your word, the more we fall in love with you and the more we trust you. <clears throat> we need to get to that place where we just trust you. Thank you so much. We give you praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Oh, Alice. Well. One more announcement. Oh, yes, one more announcement. Santa Claus Parade? Is your child going to give that announcement?
Come on up. Two of them. Here we go. Noel and Kristen. I love it when these guys give announcements. This is great. Da 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 da. <laughs> Hey there, friends, come gather round. The season of cheer is coming to town. With jingling bells and joy and parade, we need your help, so don't be afraid. In Keswick and Sutton, the floats will align with helpers and smiles that shimmer and shine. But wait, oh dear, we're missing some hands to share candies and pamphlets across these grand lands. Join us in fun, let's spread holiday cheer. Together as one, let's make it a year. So grab your mittens, your hats, and your gloves. Join in the magic, share all your loves. This year's Santa Claus Parade is on November 16th in Keswick and December 7th in Sutton. The date on the, on the bulletin is wrong. Um, <laughs> volunteers are needed to help hand out candies and pamphlets. Please mark your calendars and more information will be shared with you next week. Thank you. Did you hear what I said back there? You want it? You want to be there for the Santa Claus parade? Doesn't matter what your age is. Listen, this year we're tr we're working on, and I didn't get an answer, so I'm just going to say this. But we're working on getting the bus in the parade because it's all done up with the hope for today stuff, and then we'll have the trailer, and then we'll have the van. So this will be good because we will monopolize. <laughs> They'll say, oh, it's the Hope for Today Fellowship Parade. <laughs> They're going to change the name of it. That'd be beautiful. <laughs> but if we do get the bus in there, if we do get the bus, all y'all seniors can get in there with me. And we'll be on the bus and we can wave out the windows and throw candies at people. <laughs> That'll teach you. Anyway, it's a good time. You don't want to miss it. We have a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Okay. John 17, 1 to 7. John 17, 1 to 7. When Jesus had spoken these words, he lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that the son may glorify you. Since you have given him authority over all flesh to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is the eternal life that they know you. That's eternal life that they know you. The only true God. And Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth, having accomplished the work that you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory that I had with you before the world existed. I have manifested your name to the people whom you gave me out of the world. Yours they were, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything that you have given me is from you. There's a lot of back and forth on that one. But our passage begins with Jesus saying, the hour has come. The hour has come. Back in chapter 2, we heard Jesus say, the hour has not yet come. And in chapter 7 and 8, he said, the hour has not yet come. And now in chapter 12, we heard Jesus say, the hour was coming. And here we are in chapter 17, and Jesus says, the hour has now come. What is this hour? What are we talking about? The hour has come. It's, it's not simply the hour that Jesus has been preparing for. It's the hour that the whole world has been preparing for. Ever since Genesis, Genesis chapter 3, God promised that a Savior would come. Since the very beginning of the Bible... God promised that there would be some rescuer come to save the world from its sin. We've been waiting since Genesis, since the very beginning. We've been waiting. God promised that a rescuer would come to save humanity from sin. Isn't that interesting? So right at the very beginning of the Bible, all through the Bible, we read about Jesus, the Messiah, the, the rescuer, the Savior. 
He's coming all the way from the very beginning. People think it's just like in the second half, oh, Jesus shows up. Yeah, but all through the Bible, we've been waiting for him. And, and we've been waiting for this moment, for the moment when he rescues the world from their sin. <laughs> He's good. He's, this is what's, we're almost there. We're almost finished this whole series. I know people are rejoicing. And they're eating breakfast cereals and such. You wonder what that means. <laughs> you have to ask Matt Kirby. <clears throat> okay. So here we are. The world has not had fellowship with the Creator since, since Adam and Eve screwed up in the garden. The world has not had fellowship with the Creator. And Jesus has come to prepare the way for us to have that fellowship once again, to reconcile us to the... This doesn't happen until Jesus dies. When Jesus dies on the cross and he raises back to life, then... We're able to have our relationship with God once again, just like it was in the garden before Adam and Eve screwed up. But the difference is we are still in a sinful world. So, so now Jesus is going gonna, is gonna to die for us. He's going to come back. He's going to come back to life. He's going to be resurrected back to life. But then we have to just wait out this little bit until Jesus returns again and makes all things new. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. One guy's excited. That's fantastic. Together, Derek? Amen. Yes. We shall enjoy. Thursday. Thursday? <laughs> Someone said to me last night, they said, Derek said Thursday last week and Jesus didn't return. And I said, no, no, he meant this Thursday. And he said, so he's going to come this Thursday? I said, oh, yeah. And if he doesn't, it'll be the next Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> Watch him show up on a Monday just to spite us. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So here's the climax of the story. We're getting right to the climax here. Jesus stops to pray, right? When we're getting all the exciting stuff happen, Jesus takes a moment. He stops and prays. He pauses just before his final walk. He's about to, he's about to experience the worst kind of death known to mankind. Think about that. The Roman crucifixion is still the worst kind of death known to mankind. Isn't that incredible? They're smart people. Figure out how to kill someone so painfully. Genius. Those Italians, eh? Roma. Uh, this is my wife I was blowing kisses to in case I'm okay. In case you're a visitor here and you're thinking this word. They're not going to sit here in the front in case I blow them kisses. Jesus begins the prayer with a single request. This is so strange because Jesus says, glorify me. Jesus has, has the very right to ask God to glorify him. Why? Because he is God. He asks God the Father to glorify him. And he says, just like, just like I was glorified before. This is so important to us. God, God the Son, came to earth and became a human being. For us. He was glorified. He had all the goodness and majesty of God. And he put that aside. Still God. It's still his. But he took on humanity. So he's 100% God. But he's also 100% man. And so now he's been walking on earth for 33 and a half years. And he's ready to die on the cross. And he says glorify me as I was glorified in the beginning. With you. He wants to be elevated back to that position that he was in prior to becoming a human. He wants people to see his goodness on the cross. He wants them to see his goodness. Not to see him as a criminal. Not to see him as a curse. But to see him for his goodness. He's doing this for us. He's not dying on the cross because they caught him doing something bad. He was innocent. He's dying on the cross for us, to rescue us. He needs to be glorified. He darn right he should be glorified for that. All of mankind's worship, affection, and allegiance belongs to Jesus. And he's asking the Father to return that to him. When we talk about the glory of God, because we sing about that all, oh, glory, glory to God, God is glorified. 
We talk about the glory of God and glorifying God. We need to remember that we're referring to a noun and a verb. The glory of God is a noun. It means his majesty, his splendor. It's a display of his goodness. It's a noun. But when we talk about God's being glorified, that's a verb. Hey, I put it on the notes even. It's a verb. It's his goodness being celebrated. So you've got God and his goodness. That's the glory of God. And then you've got his goodness being celebrated. That's, that's the verb. God is glorious regardless of whether anyone understands who he is or not. But we glorify God by seeing his goodness and worshiping him for it. It's God's goodness. And listen, don't think good. Good in English. Oh, that's really good. That's really good. That good in, in, in when we're talking about God, we're talking about perfection. His good is good. It's, it's, it's the goodest. There's nothing gooder. There's good, there's gooder, and there's goodest. Not Buddhist, goodest. And he's the goodest. And it's his goodness, it's his kindness that leads to repentance. It's when we see how good he is. Good in the perfect sense. He's so good that he became man and died for us to rescue us from our sin. That's good. That's really good. And so we glorify him because of his goodness. Here's the difficulty. Jesus is about to be cursed. The cross is not only the object of torture, but it's also a sign of God's displeasure. Galatians 3.13 says this. Christ redeemed us from the curse, the curse of the law. Remember what the law, but the curse of the law. There's 613 commands that are given to Israel, not to me, to Israel. 613 commands, that's the law. Christ redeemed us from the law. We're no longer under the law. When Jesus hung on the cross said, it is finished. The law is finished. It no longer has any control on me. People say, why don't you ever preach on the Ten Commandments? I don't have to preach on the Ten Commandments. That's part of the law. That's part of the 613. I'm not under the law. So I can do whatever I want, right? No. Jesus says, I need to love the Lord my God with all my heart, mind, soul, with everything that I am, and I need to love my neighbor. That's what I have to do. I got two laws. They had 613. Some of them are ridiculous. Well, you can't stone to death your... <laughs> Would you like to stone to death your teenage kids? That's the only time you want to be under the law. If they're rebellious, stone them to death. Had you known, eh? Okay. We're not under the law. We love our neighbors as ourselves, but first we love God more than anything else. That's what God wants. That's what God wants for us. And if you do those two things, you fulfilled the law. You fulfilled it. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. It is written, cursed is everyone who is hanged on a tree. And someone said to me, they said, why do you refer to the cross as a tree? Well, it's made out of wood. Well, do you refer to toothpicks as, a, as a, a tree? Sometimes I do. I'm just going to use this tree and clean my teeth. <laughs> Don't be silly. In order to answer this request, God the Father will have to take someone who's cursed and reject it. And somehow, in some way, turn the curse into praise and the rejection into applause. So God will have to take the crucifixion of Jesus, which is disgraceful, and make it a badge of honor for his son. And how will God do that? How is he going to do that? The answer is found in verse 5 of what we're reading this morning. 17.5. And now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had with you before the world existed. The Father will glorify the Son by restoring him to the position that he had prior coming down to earth. He'll restore him with all that glory. Jesus' divine goodness will be restored through the resurrection. So here, Jesus is on the cross taking the, the sin of the world upon himself, and because the sin of the world is on him, God pours out his wrath upon Jesus. This is really important stuff, man. 
It might be heavy too, but that's okay. So Jesus is on the cross taking the sin of the world upon himself because he has no sin. And he's taking the sin of the world upon himself. And now because he's got our sin upon himself, the curse of God, the wrath of God is upon Christ. That's that moment when Jesus says, he says, have you forgotten about me? Father, Father, why have you left me? Well, God turned his back on Jesus. He had to because Jesus was cursed. He was filled with sin. And then, and then when Jesus goes into the grave and he is resurrected back to life, he's restored to that position he was in prior. He has no sin. The sin is gone, but he still has he has eternal life, which now he offers to us. So the wrath of God that was supposed to be poured out on us is poured out on Jesus. This is the most important thing you'll ever hear. And, and it's something you want to remember, but it's something that you, you want, you got to grasp it. So the Bible says we're all sinners. Every one of us are sinners. There's no one here. That's, is there anyone here that's a sin, not, not a sinner? Yeah. Don't put your hand up. No, put your hand down. Paul, put your hand down. Okay, so Paul, put your hand down. <laughs> We're all sinners. We're all sinners because we rejected Jesus Christ. You haven't been following Jesus Christ since you were a baby. No. In fact, when you were a baby, you were the worst sinner. I've seen you guys in the play box. The sandbox, whacking each other with the Tonka toys. We all, have a, we all have a sinful nature because of what Adam and Eve did. And because of that sinful nature, we've been separated from God. So we're all sinners. And the Bible says the wages of sin is death. We deserve to die. But Christ died in our place. He took our place and died. And in dying, he took our sin upon himself and gave us his righteousness if we choose to accept it. That's, that's the catch if there's such a thing as a catch. Eternal life is free. You don't have to pay for it. You don't have to go to church. You don't have to read your Bible. You don't have to do any of those things that the religions tell you you've got to do. You don't have to do those. You just have to follow Jesus Christ. Put your faith and your trust in Jesus Christ. You will want to go to church because you want to learn more about him. Once you realize his goodness, you want to praise him for his goodness. You want to know more about him. When I got into a relationship with my wife, I wanted to know all about her. Maybe not at that time, but later on I started to. If there was a book about her, I would have read it. Just to, just to check up on her. Why does she have those mood swings? No. <laughs> Did I say that out loud too? <laughs> Darn, I told you. Yeah, I know. JP says to me, he says, I wish I could preach like you preach. You, you just don't even get worried or nothing. Are you kidding me? I sweat to death up here. I'm terrified of what I might say. <laughs> it's a good thing for the Holy Spirit. You guys would all be walking out of here, let me tell you. I want to know as much about my wife as I can because I love her. And it's the same with Jesus Christ when I entered into a relationship with him. I couldn't stop reading the Bible. I wanted to learn all about Jesus because I love him. And the more I read about him, the more I love him. And that's how it's got to be. So we read the Bible because we want to, not because we have to. You don't have to do anything. You can't do anything. You're not good enough. We're all sinners. But Jesus did what needed to be done so that we could live eternally. All we got to do is put our trust in him. To those who believe, I give the right to become children of God. The Father will glorify the Son by restoring him to the position he had with the Father before the foundation of the world. Jesus' divine goodness will be restored through the resurrection. So, so here is Jesus on the cross taking the sin of the world upon himself because the sin of the world is on him. Because the sin of the world is on him, God pours out his wrath upon Jesus, not us. He pours it out upon Jesus. Jesus has saved us from the wrath. Now, now, if we don't put our trust and faith in Jesus Christ, then we're still in the situation we were in before Jesus died. We need to put our faith and our trust in what Jesus did and who he is in order to be rescued. Otherwise, you still have the wrath of God is going to be poured out upon you. And the wrath of God is eternal destruction. 
He doesn't just he doesn't just wipe you out. That wouldn't be so bad. Total annihilation, not such a bad deal. But that's not what happens. We have eternal spirits. Our lives are going to continue for eternity, whether it's eternity with Jesus or eternity in destruction. That's how it works. We're all going to be eternal, but where are you going to spend eternity? That's that's the catcher. A lot of people out here are spreading this lie about total annihilation. Jehovah's Witnesses love that. They don't have a hell. There's no hell. When you die, if you're not a Jehovah's Witness, you go into the grave, boom, that's it. That's not bad. I would rather do that than be a Jehovah's Witness. (laughs) I say that out loud too. Man. Jesus has rescued us from the wrath. Listen, Revelation 5, 12. Saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power, wealth, wisdom, might, honor, glory, and blessing. Worthy is the Lamb. That's Jesus, the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is He to receive all those things. It's His. Honor, might, honor, glory. Blessing, it's all his. The Father glorifies Jesus by restoring him to his eternal position of glory in the Father's presence. So Jesus, when he's resurrected, he, 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 he takes off and he's, he's sitting with the Father. Wherever that is, whatever that is. We don't know that part. But he's restored. That's all it means is he's restored. He's sitting at the right hand of the Father. It doesn't mean Jesus and the Father are sitting together in a couch having a Diet Coke. That's heaven right there. God, God the Father is in spirit. God the Son is still in the flesh. He's still in the flesh. So when he returns, we'll see him face to face. We'll be able to touch him. We'll be able to see the scars in his hands and his feet, his side, what he did for us, his goodness. Oh, man, that's beautiful. She didn't know how to turn it off, so she ran out. I think the Uber's here. You should should have seen her face. Ah! That's when you whip it against the wall. (laughs) Mary, do you want to come up and explain what happened to you? I thought I heard someone's voice. I was hoping it was Jesus returning, but. (laughs) Jesus desires to be glorified so he can glorify the Father. That's what he wants to do that for. Jesus is the word, the revelation of God's goodness. Jesus reveals God's goodness to us. Look at what the writer of Hebrews says. Hebrews 1.3. Jesus is the radiance of the glory of God. He's the exact imprint of his nature, and he upholds the universe by the word of his power. After making purification for sin, after dying on the cross and taking the sin of the world, he sat down at the right hand of majesty on high. Jesus is exactly, God the Son is exactly like God the Father, who is exactly like God the Holy Spirit. Three personalities, but only one God, they're exactly the same. All the honor and glory and power and blessing belongs to all of them equally. To look at Jesus is to see a perfect display of God's goodness. In this prayer, Jesus displays God's goodness by securing eternal life for those who belong to him, for those who will put their trust in him. His willingness to go to the cross, conquering death to gain eternal life for his people, it reveals the character of God. And and it ignites praise to God for his goodness. But the eternal life is not ever, it's not just everlasting life. It's not just everlasting. Eternal life is a relationship with the everlasting God. Eternal life is forever delighting in the many glories of God. Eternal life is seeing God and rejoicing forever in his presence. 
Eternal life is living how we're created to live, in fellowship with our Creator. Eternal life is a lot. Jesus brings God glory by displaying the goodness of God and bringing rebellious creatures into an eternal relationship of delight with his good God. That's what Jesus does. He's displaying God's goodness by dying on the cross for us. It's goodness. But we always look for a word better than good. There's nothing gooder than good. Good is a good word. <laughs> Never has the holy justice of God and the holy love of God been displayed so powerfully together. God pouring out his wrath, God pouring out his love, it all happened on the cross. It's an amazing display of his goodness. We cannot adequately understand how glorious God is without the cross. We need the cross to show us, to teach us, to see God's goodness and to give him praise. We needed Jesus to die. There we see God's holiness and how he became like us to die for us. We see his wrath and his love. We see his justice and mercy all on the cross. It's all there on the cross. All are perfectly displayed through Jesus' death on the cross. It, Jesus, Jesus is on the cross and he's bringing glory to the Father. He's bringing glory to the Father. It's what Jesus does. It's what Jesus wants to do. Glorify me, Father, so that I may glorify you. And listen, if that's Jesus' number one priority to bring glory to the Father, what do you think his followers' number one priority is? Amen. To bring glory to the Father. That should, be the, that should be the priority of our life in our work. Man, I, you know, it hurts me. It hurts me for you. When, when, I, when I see you at work and I see you acting a different way than you act at church, a different way than you act with your, your fellow believers, that hurts me. It hurts me when I hear from people that work with you and they say, oh, he goes to, he goes to fellowship? You're kidding. He's never told me. I've known him for 42 years. It hurts me because you're not getting it. This isn't a Sunday thing. This is a life transformation. You put your trust in Jesus Christ and your life is transformed. From now on, your number one priority is to bring glory to God. In our life, in our work, our relationship with our family, everything we do and say brings glory to God. It has to. That was Jesus' number one priority, and so it's our number one priority. Do you realize that in heaven we won't have the opportunity to share Jesus with others? Our mission is to help other people find joy in Jesus, just like we found. The clearer we see his goodness and the more his goodness is celebrated in us, the more they will see, and the more they will ask, and the more they will seek. We got it? Amen. We're all on the same page? Amen. I'm going to visit every one of your works this week. <laughs> I want to hear a good report. <laughs> I live in the same community as you. That's why I hear stuff. That's right. We don't have time to go off song. We just pray. We don't have time? Nope. When it says zero, that's my time up, isn't it? No. All time up. Okay, just pray. You're dismissed. Oh, okay. <laughs> hmm? Oh, yeah. I forgot to pray for Paul Ellis. He just had another knee change. So now he's got two. Now he's going to be a total... No. He's bionic, yeah. He's, uh, so he's still in hospital recovering. Good. He's out now? He's only there for a day. Oh, cool. Is he walking? Not very well. Not very well? There must be something wrong because he hasn't texted me in two days. He texted me. Right? Yeah? I'll have to get back to him today. But let's pray for his continued uh, 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 recovery. Yeah, thank you, Lord, for, for uh, taking care of Paul's legs. All the things that Paul's gone through in his life, Lord, we've all gone through situations. We've all gone through troubles. And again, we rejoice because you've brought us through those. It's great to be able to look back and see the goodness of God in our lives. 
Father, we pray, we pray that everybody in this room, including myself, would take seriously the call on our life. If we're followers of Jesus, we're here to bring glory to God's name in everything we do and everything we say. God, I pray that we would be different. That we are a people who are called out. We're unique. That's what you've called us in 1 Peter. We are a unique people. We're not the same as everybody else. Our focus is different. We see the goodness of God on the cross. And we know that we're here to bring glory to God just as Jesus was wanting to bring glory to the Father. Thank you so much. Father, I pray that if I've confused anybody this morning, that your Holy Spirit would continue to speak to them and continue to help them to understand the goodness of God. Listen, if you're here this morning and you've never, you've never entered into this relationship with Jesus Christ, maybe you never thought about the goodness of God. You never thought about what he did for us on the cross. We're all sinners. We all deserve to die. Wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. What a beautiful ending to that verse. We don't have to choose eternal death, eternal destruction. We can choose eternal life. The choice is ours. God doesn't force anybody into heaven. He never sends anybody to hell. The choice is ours. If you're here today and you've never made that choice... I want to invite you to come forward. Just, just come forward. By you coming forward, you're saying, I know that I'm a sinner and I can't save myself. I need a rescuer. I need Jesus Christ. By you coming forward, you're saying, I want God to forgive me for my sin and fill me with his Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit of God will come and live right inside you. You will never be alone. You'll never be alone. And the Holy Spirit will transform your life into a follower of Jesus Christ. You don't have to clean up your life. You don't, have to, you don't have to stop this and stop that and all these. No, you don't do that. The Holy Spirit of God will do that for you. That's what he does in us. If you allow him to work, he will change you. If you want to give your life to Jesus Christ this morning, I want to invite you to come to the front. But I'm going to get you all to stand first because it will be easier. Because when 15 or 20 people come forward, listen, if you're afraid to come up here, if you're afraid, just grab the hand of the person next to you and say, come with me. I don't want to go alone. God's talking to you. Come now. Come quickly. Give your life to Jesus Christ. You'll never regret it. You're not, you're not becoming a member of this church. You don't even have, or ever have to come back here. It's a good idea. We're the best church in the world. No. Listen, if God's talking to your heart, come forward. Give your life to Jesus Christ. Don't put it off. Don't put it off. You don't want to put this on. You don't know when you're going to die. You don't know when you're going to have the opportunity to make that choice again. Is God speaking to you? fight with God if he's talking to you. Listen. Listen to him. You know, it's funny because this is the first time that you realize that God is alive because he's there talking and saying, go forward. Satan's, Satan's alive too. He's telling you, run for the parking lot. Get in your car. They can't get you there. Jesus wants to rescue you. You know about his goodness, what he did for you on the cross. He wants to rescue you. Turn to him. Turn to him. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for speaking to us. I thank you for the word of God because it's truth. We live in this world where there's so much lying. There's so much stuff around us that's not true. We need your truth, and the truth will set us free. 
Thank you so much for freedom in Christ. I pray in Jesus' name for anybody here that you've been speaking to this morning. Maybe they were supposed to come forward and, and, and you, you spoke to them, but they, they just wouldn't do it. I pray, God, that they would turn to you on their way home in the car. They would just call out to you. There's no fancy words to use. There's no fancy prayers. We just talk to you. That's what prayer is. It's conversation with God. Father, speak to them, I pray. Rescue them from their sin. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Oh. You're dismissed. <laughs>